My daughter said she wants to come home to have her baby. So, I hope that's all right with you. What? What are you talking about? She wants to come back home to deliver. Where does she plan to give birth? Right here. Pam, my mother-in-law, declared confidently. You know, coming home usually means going back to one's own parents' place. This isn't her childhood home, and it's not my husband's either. I quickly set the record straight with a self-absorbed Pam. My name is Layla, and I'm a 35-year-old office worker. I've been married to my husband, Ryan, for three years. We first met at a mixer. A mutual friend set it up. I hadn't gone to many mixers before, but I was starting to think about settling down. So I decided to give it a shot and went. That's when I ran into Ryan. He looked just as out of place at these mixers, and at first, our chat was a little clumsy. But a switch in seating landed us side by side, sparking a more natural conversation. Talking one-on-one -on -one was way easier than in a group, and it felt like Ryan and I really clicked. After the mixer, we headed out for drinks, found a cozy bar, and dove deeper into conversation. We swapped numbers and started hanging out after work, grabbing drinks or dinner. Things went well between us, and before long, we were a couple. Finding a boyfriend at that mixer was a surprise, but I was elated thinking maybe it was destiny. After about a year of dating, we chose to get married. He's a year older and seemed ready for a relationship that would lead to marriage. I was on the same page. So after just a year together, we took the plunge. We met each other's families, celebrated our wedding, and started our journey as a married couple. Life with him was smooth sailing. In fact, it felt incredibly serene, and our shared interests, lifestyles, and values made everything effortless. We both had dependable jobs, so money wasn't a concern. We made loads of memories, like trips, long drives, and fancy dinners for special occasions. Being with my husband always brought joy, and I was constantly laughing. I'm convinced he's my other half. Our married life was pure bliss. Yet, three years in, something's casting a shadow over our happiness. It's the sudden appearance of my mother-in-law, Pam. Hello, Ryan. Layla. Huh? Mom? What are you doing here unannounced? To cut to the chase. Can I crash here for a bit? Wait, what? Why? There's this shady guy hanging around my place. Seriously? That's concerning. Have you called the cops? My husband questioned, clearly worried and taken aback. I did, but they told me they couldn't do much unless he does something. That's not comforting. They did say they'd step up patrols in my neighborhood, but... Ever since your dad passed last year, I've been on my own. The thought of any threat while I'm by myself is terrifying. Mom. 
she genuinely looked distressed. No doubt, dealing with a creepy stranger when you're alone is scary. I figure if I lay low for about a month, he might get the hint and leave. A whole month? I was caught off guard. Based on our chat, she planned on bunking with us for a month. That left me a bit dumbfounded. It felt like she wanted to move in. It's challenging to adjust to such a lengthy stay on short notice. But I wouldn't want to live with the guilt if something bad happened to her. Can Ryan and I chat about this for a sec? Of course. I realize this is out of the blue and probably a hassle for you two. Thanks for understanding. Ryan and I headed to our room for a quick discussion. I laid out my thoughts and reservations. He emphasized that he'd rather be safe than sorry and wanted her to stay, if only for a short while, for everyone's peace of mind. Given how strongly he felt, I was on board. We settled on letting Pam stay for a month. Really? Oh, thank you so much. She looked truly appreciative. All right, Mom. Let's grab your things then. No need. I've got everything I'll need right here. Really? Oh, okay. We both raised our eyebrows. It was clear that she had come fully equipped, expecting us to take her in. Well, we'd already agreed to let her stay, so there was no use making a big deal about it. And that's how our temporary living arrangement with Pam got started. Little did we know, this was just the tip of the iceberg. Layla, what the heck is this? Excuse me? Why are you rummaging through my drawers without asking? You shouldn't wear such bold lingerie. It doesn't match your look at all. Come on, Pam. It's not nice to just go into someone's room like that. What? What? I was just trying to help tidy up. Why are you getting all upset over that? I appreciate the gesture, but I'd rather you didn't touch my stuff. It's crucial to set boundaries in these situations. I made my stance clear to her, but she didn't seem to appreciate it. Ryan! Layla was so rude. She just yelled at me. She did? At dinner, she played the victim card, making it seem like I was in the wrong. What actually went down? I was just trying to thank her for letting me stay, so I thought cleaning her room would be nice. But she went off on me telling me not to touch her stuff. You wouldn't believe the look she gave me. Who knew someone so calm could get so mad? Maybe that's what makes it even scarier. She smirked as she spun her version, painting me as if I had some sort of temper issue. Layla, she's claiming this happened. But what's your side of the story? He turned to me, ready to listen. Taking a deep breath, I explained calmly. Yes, I got upset. And yes, I told her to leave my room alone. But that's because she walked into my room without asking and started going through my personal things. Seriously? And then... She had the nerve to comment on my choice of clothing, 
calling it gaudy and out of place. Mom? Did you seriously do that? I was just checking things out. He gave her a sharp look, which clearly made her uncomfortable. Checking what out? For what? I mean, I just... You're just trying to cover for yourself because you're caught. It's clear that Layla's being honest and you're not being straight with us. You can't be doing things like this, Mom. After my husband's scolding, her face turned a bright shade of red. I just... I was only trying to help. Then she pretended to be in tears. Seriously, she was acting like a little kid, crying when things didn't go her way. I hadn't noticed this side of her before. Maybe because I hadn't been around her this much. It's possible her late husband kept these tendencies in check. Or maybe she concealed them, not wanting to upset him. But now, without him around, she was letting loose. Regardless, if she's going to act out and add stress, I can't have her staying here for an entire month. Still, I can't ignore the potential danger at her own home either. I brought up my concerns to my husband. Can we really deal with your mom acting like this for a month? Just the thought of her snooping in my space distracts me from work. And I really don't want to shell out for locks on every tour. I get where you're coming from. I'm genuinely sorry you have to deal with this. He looked very torn. He was stuck between his mother's antics and his concern for her safety. After mulling it over, he proposed an idea. How about we set up a camera in your room? If mom sneaks in, we'll have proof and can call her out on it. Plus, we agree up front that if she trespasses, she goes back to her own place. That should deter her. That might work. It seems like a better plan than doing nothing at all. He offered to handle the camera setup. So, I was on board with the idea. Fast forward a week, and sure enough, Pam was in my room again. She even rifled through my desk drawers and was playing with my jewelry. That was the last straw for both me and my husband. Mom, what's going on here? Why is there a camera in here? We set it up to see if you'd respect our boundaries. I can't believe you'd go this far. You're the one crossing the line. You took my jewelry without asking. I... I was just going to wear it for a bit. Do you think it's okay to just take stuff without permission? It's no big deal. You're overreacting. Mom, come on. This is pretty much stealing. Stealing? You're making it sound so dramatic. You acted in a way that could be called that. Given your breach of trust, it's time for you to head back home. Hold on. I'm sorry. I apologize. Truly. I promise I won't go into your room anymore. I'll put the jewelry back. Just let me stay a little longer. Please. She apologized profusely. We hadn't seen that coming. After a chat, my husband and I decided to give her one more chance. But we made it crystal clear. One more slip up and there'd be no more chances. With this understanding, she stayed a tad longer. She had initially said she'd stay a month, half of which was already over, so we were down to just two more weeks. We hoped 
she'd gotten the message. Boy, were we wrong. She took another wild turn. Yeah, yeah, come on over. Can't wait to see you. Pam was excitedly gabbing on the phone. I was curious who was on the other end. When she hung up, I inquired. Who were you chatting with? My daughter, Natalie. Oh, Natalie. Turns out she was catching up with my sister-in-law. Pam looked over the moon. And then she said this. Natalie mentioned she's coming home for a while. Just a heads up. Hold on. What do you mean by coming home? She's coming back to deliver her baby. And where does she plan to do that? Right here. She said it as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Usually you'd go to your own parents' place for that. Are you implying she's coming here? When I pressed her, she looked surprised and retorted. Why would I have her in that old place of mine? This apartment is roomy and has extra bedrooms, so Natalie can comfortably stay here. Seriously? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could Pam, who was just a guest herself, make such a decision? And she's about to leave in a couple of weeks. Pam, you can't just call the shots like that. Even if Natalie shows up, we're not letting her in. In my words, she shot me a fierce look. How dare you? Who do you think you are? This is Ryan's place, right? You're just living here because of him and now you're acting all high and mighty. If this is Ryan's place, it's essentially the family home. Such twisted logic wasn't going to cut it. This isn't a family estate and it's not solely my husband's. I wasn't about to let her irrational claims go unchecked. Just so you're aware, this house is in my name. It is? She scoffed at my declaration. You expect me to believe you could buy a place like this? With my husband still at work, she seemed to think she had the upper hand. Did she assume she could boss me around when it was just the two of us? How presumptuous. Pam, you clearly don't know the first thing about me. I've been with a global company since graduating college, pulling in over $95,000 annually. No way! You're making that up, aren't you? It's the truth. Just ask Ryan. For real? My high salary clearly took her by surprise. Right on cue, my husband came through the door. I overheard you, Mom. I had Layla's phone on speaker, so I caught the whole conversation. You did? Why would you invite my sister here without asking? This isn't your place, and it's not mine either. So it really is Layla's house. Enough. Head back to your place. Are you really suggesting I go back? Even if it's not safe? That shady guy you mentioned? We saw someone hovering near your house, but it's clear. They're debt collectors. So you're on the run from debts? Every time we looked into it, the picture became clearer. He confronted her head on, and she went white as a ghost. You're holing up here, because those collectors don't know about this place, huh? I thought it was odd you were always home. I don't know the extent of your debt, but you have an obligation to settle it. You can't stay here expecting us to bail you out. Fill Natalie in on everything. If she tries to come here, she won't be let in. Now it's clear, you're only looking out for yourself. We're done with you. The harshness of his words seemed to break her. No! With tears streaming down her face, she watched in despair as he tossed her bags into the hallway. Time to go. We're not playing games. As her things were thrown out, she hurriedly followed. 
As soon as she was out the door, he locked it behind her. We could still hear her distressed cries, but they eventually trailed off, and she was gone. Later, he briefed his sister Natalie about their mother's debts and the looming collectors. He might have laid it on thick, suggesting that sticking close to their mom could put Natalie in danger too. Natalie took his word for it, distancing herself from Pam and even scrapping her homecoming plans. It seems Pam tried reaching out, but Natalie kept shutting her out, leaving Pam to fend for herself. In the end, Pam ended up back at her place, where the debt collectors caught up with her. They put her to work to pay off her debt. She had always lived beyond her means. Once she got her hands on her late husband's inheritance, her spending spiraled, leading to mountains of debt. However, she only had herself to blame. She needs to face the music and pay back what she owes. We don't want any part in her mess, but we do hope she straightens out her life. Considering her track record, though, that might be a stretch. As for my husband and me, we're living our best lives, cherishing our time together. I'm committed to my career, and together, we're focused on building a future filled with happy memories. What the heck? I thought it'd be a normal meal, but suddenly my vision started getting fuzzy. My stomach was in knots. I broke into a cold sweat, and I crumpled to the ground. My husband just sat there, no reaction. The last image I had was his smirk. Why? Why is he smiling like that? Did he? Drifting in and out, his voice broke through. Finally, it's done. I blacked out, not really getting his message. When I woke up, our relationship had shifted big time. My name's Kim, 30 years old. I majored in psychology in college and now work as a middle school counselor. Everyone's got some things they need to work on, whether it's a big or small, no matter the age. Issues might seem tiny to one person, but huge to someone else and the other way around. Back in college, I struggled mentally with social stuff, but found help with an amazing school counselor. She turned my life around, sparking a new dream in me. Before, I was aimless, but she inspired me to pursue counseling. I'm living that dream now and loving it. But it's not just the job. My husband, Dennis, adds to my happiness. We go way back to college days. We connected in a music club, got together at a reunion, and got married three years later. With our history, we're more friends than just a couple. He's always been my go-to guy. Now at 30, and married for two years, we're at the point of thinking about kids. But intimacy's been sparse lately, probably because he's been swamped with work. I can't let things slide, so I brought it up. Hey, Dennis, there's something on my mind. Got a sec? I caught him on a Saturday night after he'd been working. He let out a sigh and responded. What is it now? I pushed past his tone. So, we're both 30, right? Don't you think we should talk about having kids? Why now? I get back, be from work, and this is what you hit me with? I just thought we should chat about it. Could you pick a better moment? Read the room. I didn't mean to. I'm not in the headspace for this conversation. 
especially about this. He cut the conversation short with a deep sigh and left the room. This has been his M.O. lately. We used to talk through anything, no matter how tired he was. But now, he's ducking these talks. I've noticed a shift in him over recent months. Maybe his work, taking up our together time, is the culprit. But my efforts to reconnect seem pointless if he doesn't meet me halfway. I do want kids. But first, we've got to be on solid ground. The following day, he didn't get out of bed until the afternoon. Once he finally showed up in the living room, I tried again. Look, I'm sorry about yesterday, but we've been drifting apart. I was hoping we could get back to spending quality time together. Like old times. From kids to this? Can't you see I'm buried in work? I know you're slammed. But working late every night and the weekends? It's a lot. Can't you clock out at a normal hour once in a while? Man, you never let up. You get why I'm doing this, right? For us. I'm grateful. Really, I am. But I'm working too. So you don't need to burn yourself out. Enough. Let's shelf this for now. With that, he snagged his wallet and phone and split. As the door shut behind him, I felt this tightness in my chest release, and the waterworks started. Why? Why is he acting this way? I just wanted us to get back to how things were. His words echoed in my head as I cried, the tears just pouring out. That day, I sobbed like I hadn't in ages, and it was just the start of a much bigger storm. Morning greetings? Gone. If I said dinner was ready, he'd bail. My attempt to bridge our gap had backfired. Instead of getting closer, we grew even more distant. One weekend, with him off working again, I was left to my own devices. I opted for a house cleanup. I tackled the living room, our bedroom, and then his room, which was a mess. As I cleaned up his junk, I spotted a weirdly colored receipt under his dresser. What's this? A receipt? It was greenish and from a swanky French place I'd been raving about. I remembered that unique tinted receipt because someone posted about their dinner there online. Why did he have this? He never took me. The order was clearly for two, maybe three. I was sure he knew I wanted to have dinner there. Why keep it from me? A sinking feeling set in. Digging deeper, his trash yielded more two-person dining receipts. He'd been eating out often, and clearly with someone he didn't want me to know about. The dates matched his late nights at work. Had he been lying? Maybe he was seeing someone and just using work as a cover. My head swirled with doubts and my heart felt heavy. I had to ask him. When he got in around 11 that night, I jumped right in. Are you seeing someone? His eyes went wide, but he quickly laughed it off, saying, Seriously? You think I'm cheating? 
That's way out there. Then, explain these receipts. They're all for two. Who did you go out with? Just a work buddy. I pick up the tab because they're junior to me. Really? Why would I lie? Cheat on you? Come on. I hope that's true. His reaction felt off. Typically, he'd be upset. But now, he just gave a forced grin. He was up to something. So, I kept tabs on him. But he was on his toes, not slipping once. In fact, he flipped the script, acting super sweet, like in our early days. Kim, how about dinner tonight? I'll be home early, and let's hang out Saturday. Remember that cake you love? Got one for dessert tonight. It was like night and day from before. But his sudden niceness was definitely because I'd called him out. He was hiding an affair. Catching him in the act, though, was proving tough. While I was uh, mulling over my next move, he threw a curveball. Our anniversary's Saturday, right? I've got it all covered. Let's make it special. You're doing everything? Yeah. I've been a pain recently. I'll take care of everything. Wine, snacks, the works. That's sweet. But why the sudden plan? Just want to show you I care. Is that okay? I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Something fell off. To be on the safe side, I gave my folks a heads up, asking them to check in if they hadn't heard from me by Saturday night. Finally, our anniversary day came. Per Dennis's suggestion, I caught a movie after work. When I got back, the table was set with dishes and wine. Welcome home, Kim. Everything's set. He said, flashing an odd smile. I thanked him, but hesitated before sitting. The dishes smelled amazing, but I wasn't hungry. Aren't you eating? He asked, looking genuinely confused. I just shook my head. He smirked, then poured me a glass of wine. Forget the food for now. Try this wine. Got it just for you. Wait, the bottle was already open. I opened it earlier to let it breathe. Go on, have a drink. All right, thanks. It was strange how he kept pushing the wine. Suspicious, I faked a sip, then snuck a quick bite. Suddenly, everything went haywire. What the heck? I thought it'd be a normal meal. But suddenly, my vision started getting fuzzy. My stomach was in knots. I broke into a cold sweat, and I crumpled to the ground. And Dennis just sat there. No reaction. The last image I had was his smirk. Why? Why is he smiling like that? Did he? Drifting in and out, his voice broke through. Finally, it's done. What did he mean by done? What is he talking about? Desperate for answers, I tried speaking, but couldn't. He looked downright ecstatic, saying, You can join me now. Just us. No more distractions. We're together forever. Yeah, I love you too. In that moment, my love for him froze over. It clicked. He must have spiked the food. His plan was to harm me from the start. Before I could process this, darkness took over. Waking up, I found myself 
under a soft, hued ceiling. I heard my parents exclaim, Kim! Mom! Dad! Thank goodness! We found you out cold! We were so scared! Thanks for coming. Where's Dennis? They hesitated and looked to the side. I sat up, following my dad's gaze, and was shocked to see my injured husband beside an unknown young woman on the bed. My dad filled me in. Dennis tried to land you in the hospital with something in that wine. The woman is his secret girlfriend. The wine? Yeah. Doctors didn't find anything harmful in you. Seems you had a stress-caused ulcer. So the sharp pain wasn't his doing? No, just a strain of being with him. If you'd really drunk that wine, it could have been bad. Why does he look so rough? We got into it, landed a couple on him. We're handing him to the cops soon. As my dad spoke up, Dennis's face went ghost white. In a sudden bout of desperation, he dropped to his knees, begging my dad. Hold on. Isn't getting the police involved a bit much? I mean, Kim's all right. Excuse me? We all know what you tried to pull on our daughter. Acting clueless won't cut it. She's been through hell because of you. We've got that wine as evidence. Hand that over, and you're toast. Hold on. If this gets out, I'll lose my job. My family will suffer. Not our problem. You teamed up with her, pointing at the mistress, and did this to our Kim. Unforgivable. My rattled husband then looked at me, his eyes big and pleading like a puppy left out in the rain. Please, I'll make it right. Name your price. So please. I'd made up my mind. No room for leniency for a guy who couldn't even muster an apology. I shrugged him off and shot back. Your money? Not interested. An I'm sorry would have been a start. Knowing I didn't have a child with someone like you? Dashed a bullet. Please, I'll apologize. Give me a chance. Too late. Whatever you say, the ship's sailed. Face the music, you jerk. And I doubt there'll be a welcome mat waiting for you after you're done doing time. No, help me out. As Dennis pleaded, the cops my dad had called showed up and carted him and his lover off. They both ended up behind bars. He got fired, and I got a lawyer, filed for divorce, and claimed damages. Not sure how long he'll be locked up, but I'm betting there won't be a place waiting for him when he's out. Frankly. He brought this on himself. He's gonna pay for what he did. Meanwhile, I quit my job to steer clear of any reminders of my ex. Moved to a neighboring state and landed a gig as a hospital-based clinical psychologist. From here on, it's all about me. I owe a ton to my folks for having my back that day. My plan is to take care of my parents and live my days in peace. <laughs>